Um, you know, one of the stories that was told over and over again is a group of, of young women, 18, 19, 20 years old, went to go see Mahaley and, and to have her read for them. They were from Atlanta. And one of the girls, Mahaley said, oh, sorry, darling, I can't read for you. I can't read for you. And so the girl goes uh-huh. back out. Her friends come in, come in and they get Mahaley to Mahaley reads for her friends. And her friends are like, Miss Mahaley, why wouldn't you read for our friend? And Miss Mahaley goes, because your friend doesn't have any future to read. <gasps> That's what she said. You're, you're- Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I am joined today with my friend, Esoteric Athens. No, I'm just kidding. My friend, the Pickle <laughs> Chickle, Angie Tillman. I will be putting her uh, channel links, as always, down in the description box below. How you doing today, Angie? We've been chatting for a while off screen, but, you yeah, know. Yeah, we I'm have. Good. I mean, pretty funny stuff that we will shall remain un, um chatted about right here <laughs> a private conversation. Oh, I, know, I want to know about your glasses girl I'm well i've had glasses for a while i just don't <laughs> wear them i've been very reluctant to wear them i i know as an rh negative we get we we have stigma astigmatism as they say but i recently learned that it's not astigmatism it's the fact that i'm rh negative and the back of my eye that's unseen back of your eye like in the eye is shaped a different shape uh-huh. Different shape with your RH. Uh, if your RH negative, that's why a lot of RH negatives have the propensities to see things others don't, to like see ghosts, see UFOs, all that kind of stuff, because our eyes are shaped differently, so we take in light differently. And if you guys know, if you have an astigmatism, so a lot of us RH negative get, negatives get diagnosed with astigmatism because we see light differently, but it's actually not astigmatism. However. As I've gotten into my 40s, I have noticed it is a whole lot easier for me to look at my notes and to read with the glasses on, especially with the big light right here. So astigmatism or no astigmatism, it, when I do my deep dives, I don't wear my glasses because I have it all pre, pre. Um, and this is kind of a deep dive, but we're doing it a little bit differently. Normally when I shoot by myself, I've got everything organized, so I don't need my glasses to see. I'm just staring at the green light in the monitor. Uh, but since we're going to be... I, I, I learned about this person a while ago and she's kind of been kind of sitting in the back of my head. And Angie, I was thinking about like when I first opened my channel before I went super conspiratorial and which has been fun, I really wanted to, to um, focus a lot. You know, there, there's two sides to the South. I always say this all the time. They're, they're really like two sides to the South. You've got one side, which is um, super fundamentalist you know, like very strict conservative. And mm-hmm. then you've got another side to the mm-hmm. South that's very centric. You know, we think it kind of reminds me of the family I married into. There's like very really, really conservative and then really, really, I'll just say fun. fun. <laughs> and I always say I laugh. And that's why I opened my channel because I wouldn't want to be from anywhere else in the world. I've tr- luckily been very blessed. I've traveled the world. I've lived in multiple countries. There is nothing quite as potent as the southeastern United States. There is just this personality that exists here. And and every Southerner watching right now, you know what I'm talking about. When we talk about the eccentric side of the United States, like we, you know, one of the biggest books in modern and modern um in our modern history that's come out of the South is Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, right? Which mm-hmm. takes place in Savannah. It's based on a true story. And in the beginning, they show this in the movie as well. They talk about the man who walks the ghost dog every day. Mm-hmm. That's not weird in the South. <laughs> no. That's normal. That's well, like you're talking about my owls all the time. I mean, you know, some people believe it. Some people think, oh, you're just, you want to believe those things, Angie. You want to believe that owl is like warning you. But that's the South, <laughs> y'all. That's what we, we're all a little witchy down here in the South. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We are, especially the women. Um, I always laugh. I say, you know, if you come from the eccentric side of the, of the South, which I consider my family to be the eccentric side of the South, you go to church on Sunday, but on Sunday evening, you're practicing, practicing some voodoo. 
Uh-huh. Because you learned so much gossip at church. Yes. So, and then, so then you're home that night going, mm-hmm. Well, now we've got like the Facebooks so we can go and like. <laughs> well, you love Jesus, but you also know how to, how to crush some herbs and do some spells. Like uh-huh. that's just, that's the South, right? And, like I always laugh, like the eccentric side of the South, like we went to church every Sunday, but my mama was the first person to tell me a ghost story. So you can't tell me that all the people in the South believe you either go to heaven or hell when you die, when everybody's fucking house is haunted. Like, you know, that's just how it is. We ha- we talked about the werewolf of Georgia, which um, Angie and I did, which is going to be kind of near where the air, the location of the story we're uh-huh. going to talk about today. Um, you, you've got, again, the hoodoo, the voodoo. You've got that combination of the Native Americans. Um, you have have it, it's so humid down here that the air kind of breathes which i think adds to that um mysticism it's a very mystical place to live and so this again this is that's kind of what i when i first again when i first opened my channel that was kind of the the uh direction i was going was to really show that side of the south which is that culture and Again, if you're from the South, you know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Everybody's grandmama had a, de- a deck of tarot cards hidden somewhere in that house. Yes. It only came out when the church ladies weren't there, right? right. Um, you know, my, my favorite story from my mother, because my mother's family is from Charleston, South Carolina, and they're like, I say they're more witchy than my dad's side, but my grandmama, my dad's mama, I think she... I think she had, you know, she was the one that had books on reincarnation under the bed for my grandfather. And she was, before she died, she really wanted me to know, oh, I'll tell you this, guys, before we get started. Because my grandmother, my grandmama, my dad's mama's from South Georgia, Quip, Quipman, Georgia. Very small town outside of Valdosta. They have a festival every year called the Skillet Festival. And one time I was a celebrity judge of a food competition. Well, Angie, I found out you and I should go together to this town because my grandmama, I'm not going to say her maiden name because I know I don't know much about her family. And actually, let's open with my grandmama because there's some correlations between the story we're going to tell today. She's my only relative. She's my only direct, quote unquote, ancestor who's actually from Georgia. My dad's dad is from Knoxville, Tennessee. He's Appalachia. And my mom's family is from the low country. They're all from the coast of South Carolina. My grandmother, though, was from Quitman, Georgia. And she, her family, I won't say her last name because I think I got some extended cousins down there. I don't want to, like, dox Mm -hmm. This is a very small town. Um, Her last name was said a certain way that sounded very English but was spelled very French. And she grew up on a dairy farm down in Quitman. She made sure to tell me before she died. I don't know why she wanted to tell me this, but she wanted me to know out of all the grandkids, I was the only one she told this to that her family come, came up from New Orleans. That's how they got to South Georgia, which makes sense that they came up from New Orleans. And I kept thinking, okay, interesting. Like, why didn't you tell us this when we were young? came up from New Orleans. I love uh, it. Yeah, up from <laughs> New Orleans to, to Dairy Farm. And she goes, look at the spelling. We're French. You're French from my side. And I've been thinking about that a lot. She died a few years ago. Um, and I've been thinking about that a lot. I'm like, was she telling me she was a witch? Like, what, what was she telling me? Um, but I, I decided because I'm going to tell you, and I, I, we're going to open with this story because this is going to have a lot to do with Mahaley Lancaster as far as my perception of Mahaley. My grandmother's family, I, I don't know. I know she had. Her dad, my great grandfather, his name was Paul. I won't say his last name. And I know he had a brother named Spencer that everyone called Spence. Now I believe he had some sisters, but it could have been his his aunts that my grandmother was referring to when I get to this story. But anyway, before we get to her aunts, I'm gonna tell you guys, I decided, since I don't know much about her family, I know so much about my mom's side of the family. But I don't know much about my dad's side. So I decided to do a little digging into my grandmother in South Georgia because of what she she really wanted me to understand. There was something I needed to know. I knew, I already knew they were very prominent in Quitman. I knew that they were very wealthy. Um, I knew that they were all a bunch of attorneys. Mm-hmm. So I went down the rabbit hole and I found my, my great-great-grandfather, which would have been my grandmother's grandfather. His name was Stanley. I've done a little bit of history about your family too. And it's, it's upstairs, but I don't know when we first started filming together, 
Which side? The, the, the equipment side? Yes, because I did. I, I need to go dig it back out again. But I, I knew about the Stanley part. I've got them in my family, too. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Stanley haunts. Well, apparently they were very prominent. Everybody knew who these people were. Like, they're legends in Quitman, Georgia, which isn't saying much. Quitman is what, like, a stoplight? Like, that's about it. But they're like... It's kind of, the, it's kind of like... I, isn't it kind of in between, like, it's Thomasville... It's right outside but of Thomasville and then you've got Austin. Yes. Yes. Like the biggest like straight thing, line. Yeah. If you, yeah, it's like a straight line right across, right above Florida, right above the Florida, the Florida mm -hmm. um, state line. If you lived in Quitman, your big city to go to the grocery store would be Valdosta, basically. Like that's, mm -hmm. you're basically 15 minutes from Valdosta. But my great, great grandfather haunts a building. <laughs> In Quitman. Yeah. Oh, there are ghost <laughs> stories. I found them on YouTube of this guy. He was a Freemason, a very high ranking Freemason. I didn't know that. Apparently, I got a lot of Freemasonry in my family. Apparently, I do too, because you just did a thing on um, Alexander the Great or something. And yeah. my, oh, my grandma, my grandma down in Sylvester, Georgia, she had a bedroom in the house with that was just a spare room, and she had that big old, you know white paper that teachers would use you know yeah. like just cover a whole wall and she had a whole wall covered in it and she did so much family history that with a little pen like it's that small handwriting the whole thing was full like she traced us all the way back to charlemagne alexander the great and all and i've heard like that he was like one of the first like like freemasons anyway started so, that cult of that has nothing to do with this story but we've all got them in our we've families. all got it we've all got it and so i thought i was like cracking up laughing i'm looking at all these youtubes of these crazy stories about this stanley and i won't say his last name very prominent they're all lawyers all of them are big time attorneys attorneys down there i think i still got some cousins who are down there as attorneys because the firm name is still in, in use i don't know that's why i don't, don't want to say the last name because i don't want to like Docs anyone accidentally but i was like i think i have a karmic duty to go down to quitman and talk to my great great grandfather and send him on his way he ain't gonna scare me i'm I your friend that. i think i need to go down there and like do some like some woo woo stuff and be like listen stanley listen here honey i know you never knew me but i'm your granddaughter's granddaughter you got might have a place for us to stay. Well, I mean, I, I already looked at hotels. There's like a Best Western. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you that's know. true. I, but I thought we should go. I mean, we should totally go down there and like. Like I'm already, I'm inviting myself. Because <laughs> I don't want to do this. But I mean, and, and I don't think in Quitman, Georgia, with the eccentric colloquial culture, I don't think they would think that's weird if I just show up and be like, I'm his great, great granddaughter. Uh huh. I think I can move him along. My grandmother was Marianne. Well, and they probably all, so there's a, my, my grandfather, my great grandfather, my grandmother grew up on a dairy farm. So he was the one first kid in his family who wasn't an attorney. He ran a dairy farm. She lived on an old plantation house. I remember this because he died. My great grandfather, my great granddaddy, Paul died when I was four. And I remember him. I have like one memory of him sitting on a, a like a lazy boy. It was a beautiful old, I remember it was a big house. And of course, if I go there now, it's probably just going to look like an average size plantation house. Yeah. Like nothing, you know, because when you're a kid. And I remember my dad's cousin, first cousin, who was my first cousin once removed. He was in between my age and my dad's age. And I remember he would play with me like on the stairs, like going up and down the stairs on our butts before we had iPhones and cell phones and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Anyway, apparently that dairy farm now has become like an actual manufacturing farm. Like they've actually made it, I guess when my grandmother and her sister sold it after my great grandfather died, they sold it. So I think I could probably just drive up there, knock on the door and be like, yeah. Hello. <laughs> I am Paul's great granddaughter. <laughs> so, you know, and so I, anyway, but I was going to start this because there's a lot about my Haley Lancaster that actually does remind me of my dad's mom. And, um, my dad's mom went to the house she met my grandfather is that she went to university and at that age oh and there you, you froze for a second at that age at that time women did not go to university right they that just was not common but my grandmother really wanted to go to university and she actually ended up getting her master's like she she was 
she was she was pantsuit nation before Hillary Clinton stole that from her. Although my grandmother was a Republican. Uh, uh -huh. Well, my grandmother told me many years later, I remember I was home visiting from Los Angeles. This was after I was graduated from college, all that kind of stuff. Many years later, I remember standing in her kitchen with her at my grandparents' house. And she was telling me, like recapping why she decided to go to university. I think she was kind of having some realizations. And she made a point in saying that all of her aunts were um, spinsters, that they never got married. And so as a child growing up in Quitman, a very small town, she was very concerned that she would never meet anyone to marry. So that's why she wanted to go to university so that she could actually meet someone. To get her MRS degree. <laughs> get her MRS degree, basically. And she did. She met my grandfather. He wasn't, he was in the military at that, that point. He was passing through the town where her, her college was. And she was at a house party. And she was playing the piano because she was a pianist. And he walked in and saw her and he thought, that's the girl I'm going to marry. So it was a good thing she decided to do that because we would, none of us would be here today if that didn't happen. But all these years later, I was in her kitchen and she said to me, she goes, she goes, Bryce, I realized something. I just realized something. She goes, I don't think my aunts were spinsters because they couldn't find a date and equipment. I uh -oh. think they were lesbians. Lesbians. <laughs> and it took her like 80 years to like, re like that dawning, like, oh, they weren't spinsters because they couldn't find a man. They were spinsters because they didn't want a man. <laughs> yeah. That's well, really my, funny. And that goes along with like the Mahaley story, we, yes, we think. Yeah. We think. Well, my, my grandmother's aunts also were in the the suffrage, the suffrage, how do you say it, movement, where the women would, would march for, yeah, yeah. for my, my, my great aunts. And rights and, yeah, femi the feminist movement. Right. Right. To vote. They wanted to vote, uh -huh. um, you know, very highly educated women, um, which Mahaley was as well. Mahaley was in that movement, too. You know, maybe she was one of my great aunts. I don't know. I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> but and she you know, looks, they all kind of look the same back then, I guess, the way they dress and stuff. But I mean, she looks very identical to some of the pictures of my ancestors that are on the yes. wall. <laughs> one of them looks like we always said the witch, Wicked Witch of the West from Wizard of Oz on the bicycle. That's kind of oh, like. Oh, yeah, they have that there. Well, it's the same time period. <laughs> Yeah. And um, and so Mahaley, so who is Mahaley Lancaster, guys? Well, she is known as the Oracle of Ages. So she um had she was quite famous. Uh, she died in 1955. We're going to go into these dates, but uh, looking back, I said to I said to Angie as we signed on, and this I don't know, I have no idea, and it, it doesn't really matter. I don't I don't care. But she never married. Her sister was also a spinster who lived with her. And when you, when I look at pictures of her, I kind of was reminded of my grandmother's story about her great aunts who were, who now she believes were probably lesbians. And I, I said that to Angie. Some of the pictures of Mahaley actually look like my grandfather or something. <laughs> like, you know, I, I think she looks very kind of, you know, masculine in a way. <laughs> My boyfriend said that at once. He goes, you keep going back in time and you see old pictures. You can't decide who's the grandmama, who's the grandfather. <laughs> so grandmama had just as much facial hair as grandpa. Um, but, so Mahaley, so let's go. So she is the Oracle of Ages. She was born Amanda Mahaley Lancaster on October 18th, 1875. And again, she died on November 22nd, 1955. She was a lawyer. She, in fact, was the first female lawyer in the state of Georgia. She was a political activist, a midwife, a teacher, and most famously, an oracle. Now, mm -hmm. something about Mahaley is that, and I've covered the children of the call on this channel before, Mahaley was born a child of the call. So this means that when she was born, the, the sac, the placenta, children sometimes come out, it's rare, still in the, the womb, in the sac. Oh, I've never heard of that. Okay. Call. And it is said, I will, I will put that video in the description box, guys, that I covered before um, about this, this uh, legend, that children who are born in the call are said to be very psychic and have very uh, mystical abilities. So this would be true for Mahaley. 
All right. Now, not only did she have quite a resume, so not only was she very active, she ran for a seat, I believe, in the Georgia Senate as the first woman. She what didn't win. So we weren't ready for that yet, but she was very active with women's rights. And she was very respected by the community, even though she was very eccentric and had this um, reputation of being very psychic. And even though like she ran for the legislature, she was the first woman well, in the state of Georgia to do that. Yeah. She didn't win, but a lot of her ideas went on to become a lot of going on exactly. today. Yeah. But even though she was a midwife, she, one of her, one of the, uh, one, one, one thing she wanted for the state of Georgia was that any woman pregnant, regardless of their ability to pay, needed to have a doctor present. Mm -hmm. Like she wanted medical care for all women. And, I, and you know, I think about that because the bed that I slept in as a child now not the mattress. Now, if you guys see old Southern beds, old antique Southern beds are really high up. They're high. Um, and the, and, and the, the bed that I slept in, it was a queen size bed, very high up. I had to have stair. You, you see the stairs to get up in the bed was the same bed that my, actually my grandmother, the one that I was just referring to was born in different mattress. I, I actually have a little stool that I step on to get in my yeah. bed. My <laughs> mom has one for her bed too. Like it's, that's very normal down here in the South to have really high beds. Like that's a big <laughs> thing upstairs to get up. So yeah. So at that point, women were mostly from what I understand, giving birth at home. I believe my grandmother was born. My, my dad's mom in the late twenties or early thirties. I don't know her exact birth probably early 30s i think my grandfather was late 20s so even at that point and, the, and my my grandmother's family was a very prominent family children were being born at home and so she wanted to make sure that these women that were very poor that were you know sharecroppers wives or living in in huts were able to get access to give and that's a very big thing right that's something that's like mm -hmm. duh now like absolutely duh now so anyway so um, another thing about her is that she had to, to add to her eccentricity is that she always wore a military jacket, which he will believe were her father's. Now, guys, I want you to think about it. I know military jackets are in, in, in vogue now, but this was like a proper military jacket in a time when women were wearing like long dresses. Maybe that's why I thought she looked like my grandfather. <laughs> But, you know, but seriously, he was a little skinny guy. But anyway, just, but yeah, continue on. I just like, that just hit me. I was like, it, that's it was, why. It was, it was that, that picture. Yeah, women it was did that not, picture. Yeah, women did not wear that, right? And, and she also, <laughs> on top of that, had a glass eye. So she lost her eye as a child and she had a glass eye. And so it added to this mystique of who she was. Now, she ended up um, becoming very... Uh, even before her oracle abilities were starting to become popular, she herself was very, obviously, very active in politics, very well educated. She was a teacher for a while, too, all that kind of stuff. Um, she, she she was very famous, was, was doing very well for herself financially, but she spent her whole life living in a shack. Like, she literally lived in this one shack her whole life with her sister, uh, legend states that she was kind of paranoid about keeping her money on her. She had been robbed a few times. And so the bank would always get annoyed when she would come in because she would hide her money in the chicken coop before she could take it to deposit it. Like this is before, obviously, credit cards, debit cards, all that kind of stuff. So the bank would come in and they get mad because Miss Mahaley would bring this money in and it would have, to have chicken crap all over it. <laughs> so they had, would have to tell her, Miss Mahaley, you're going to have to clean off your money before you bring it in here because she would hide it in the chicken coop. And I heard somebody say that it's still legend in this area that people still go and look and see if they can find any leftover money that she left because she, when she, when she did pass away, she was a very wealthy woman, very wealthy. So anyway, you guys, so where she is from is an area called Heard County, Georgia. Now, if you call your hometown by its county name, you know, it's a small town. Right, like here, Riley, we say Oconee, Oconee, but the county seat is Watkinsville. Yeah, we just say Oconee, which I hate that actually because I love the little town of Watkinsville. But you know, but it's it's starting to become like Watkinsville is getting more well known. But um, but everybody around here just calls it Oconee. They're like, oh, you moved out to Oconee. <laughs> That's the county, and like so, county. I, live, I live in Atlanta. I would never say oh, I'm from Fulton County. You say Atlanta, oh. right? So right. so. You know, it's a small town when it's just Heard County. 
Now, something very, and this is just so you guys know that this is um, about, let me see, I, I wrote it down here. Let me find it. So it's about 60 miles kind of southwest from Atlanta. It's very close to the Alabama border. Um, now, this is also known as the Trope Herd Corridor. Did you research this, Angie? I didn't, but I do know about the area weather-wise. And I've all, I don't know if this is where you're going with this, but I've always thought it was so interesting that like LaGrange, if you watch the weather, just in the morning, get up, you know, like turn on the news if you do that. And the weather, LaGrange, Georgia, which is right there. there. Yeah. Yeah. is like always either. It's just weird. It'll be like all around LaGrange will have like all these different degrees but then in LaGrange it'll be completely different than anything else it is it's really weird something's going on what's <laughs> going on there it's a corridor so the, <laughs> the trope cord herd corridor east to west it's 120 miles or 193 kilometers for our friends who are watching from other countries south to north it's 70 miles or 113 kilometers so this whole area is known as one of the biggest spots for paranormal and UFO activity. I had no idea about that. I just knew about the weather. <laughs> like, it might have something to do with it. So uh -huh. this is close to our werewolf of Georgia, which Angie and I covered. I'll put that in the, de in the description box below. So this is known for Bigfoot, Sasquatch, uh, all sorts of stuff, UFO but and this is small towns, isn't it, Angie? Like this is not. Yeah. There's no yeah. Lagrange. Lagrange, Georgia, is not that big. And it's yeah, right. like my aunt. I mean, you could just say um, the road she lived on. Everybody knows. Everybody knew like where that is. You know, like it. It was just that was it. You didn't. You didn't have to have the address. It was just like, oh yeah. I don't want to name her name, but you know. Yeah. You know, that's how it is. Like one of the people I listened to was saying how, you know, this is mostly like back roads. Like it's still mm -hmm. to this day, a lot of it is back roads. Mm -hmm. So this whole area is known for very eccentrically strange stuff as we're talking about in the South. So even though this is a, and that's the funny thing about Mahaley too. Also, I love the name Mahaley. Like, I think that's an incredible name. I, I couldn't I know, I'm thinking, out. do I need to have another baby? Just because that, I love it. <laughs> I know, and I want to say like, part of me is like, is this like some Native American lineage? I don't know too. I mean, La Lancaster was her last name. That's obviously a very English last name. But the name Mahaley is just such a pretty name. I think I've never heard of it before. And the way it's spelled May Haley. Like with yeah, the Y. It's, yeah. It's like, spelled M A H H A H L E Y. Mahaley Mahaley Lancaster. Miss mm -hmm. Mahaley. So um anyway, so Love there it. were a couple so she she kind of was known um in the area for being this oracle. And and uh, one thing I wanted to bring up too is not only was she this like extremely psychic oracle like she was like really spot on and we'll get into that with with what and how she got so famous she got really famous for her incredible psychic abilities but she was also a church goer the methodist church she every sunday she went she was a very devout christian on top of that which a lot of the stuff i read about her people were very shocked about that like how she was at church every sunday and she had dogs she loved dogs she had a herd of dogs with her all the time and those dogs followed her around town everywhere she went they even went to church with her on sunday which again i'm telling you guys like people from other those yankees i know our, our viewers from other countries think we're all yanks here in america but no yankees in america the yanks that's one specific part of the country that's like new york new england area anyway that might seem strange to people outside of the Southwest, but that's not strange to me. Is that strange to you, Angie, that she was no, not at all, not at all. Just... And I read somewhere, I think I, I saw uh, that at her, where she's buried, uh, yeah. she died what 1955. Yeah. But so where she's buried on her headstone, isn't there something that says like, if you leave a dollar for me and a dime for my dogs, we're going to get into that. That's how much she charged for her readings. So okay. She charged for a reading, she got a, a dollar ten cents, and she when people would ask her, she'd say a dollar for me, a dime for my dogs, and that was her pay, that was your payment for a reading. And when she would read for people, they said she would do this a very this thing where she would spit, she would and spit in the fire and read the smoke. 
And some people said she would even add, and I think she did this kind of to add to the entertainment value, is she would take her eye out, her fake eye out sometimes, and play with her eye while she was reading your smoke. Now, again, in the South, that's not weird. It's not weird no. for us to, to, I mean, that doesn't people out the South would be like, oh, I can't believe she was a Christian and also an Oracle. Darling, that's all of our grandmas. Like, <laughs> I don't, you know, this is not... This is not um, a strange occurrence. This is just the South. All right. So now she became super famous. There were two Georgia cases, again, because she was a lawyer, too, that made her very, very famous. Um, hold on. Let me let me look through my notes here, guys. Got to get to the cases. The one was the Leo Frank case, which I believe I covered the Leo Frank case when I was doing the the vampire of, of um, here in Atlanta which I will place that down in the description box below. So basically, Leo was a superintendent of an Atlanta pencil factory. And at this point, this was before, really before child labor laws. This was in 1913. Uh, Mary Fagan was a 13-year-old employee. Mary went to get her paycheck from the factory. She ended up being murdered. We won't get into the details of the case. But Leo Frank was convicted of her murder, although many people believed him to be wrongly convicted. He was then lynched by a crowd who kidnapped him from the jail. Now, this happened a lot down here in the South, too, right? The people would just come get someone from a jail and lynch him. Um, now, people believed Leo Frank was Jewish, and so they believed it was it was uh, spawned by some anti-Semitism, all that kind of stuff. I don't know. You know obviously, we weren't there at the time, but it, it look, does look like Leo Frank had nothing to do with her. It does look that he was innocent. And at that time, <laughs> Haley was one of the few people who supported his innocence at that time. Um, the big one that got her famous was, and they've written a book about this, and they've made a movie about this. And Mahaley Lancaster is in the story. And, and in the movie, Mahaley Lancaster was played by June Cash, Johnny Cash, his wife. Yeah. You know, played Mahaley. And this was murder in Coweta County. All right. Coweta County is right beside Heard County. Now, what happened was um, this happened in 1948, so about seven years before Mahaley passed away. There was a man named John Wallace. And in the movie, Andy Griffith pay, plays John Wallace. And he was Isn't that incredible. Like, we're talking about somebody that had all these like pretty big names play in this movie too so exactly well the shocking thing was so how this case became so popular it, it, there were two big things that really stood out with this case john wallace and wallace and ended up becoming the first white man in the state of georgia to be convicted to the death penalty on the testimony of two black men that's one thing and also john wallace <laughs> was very familiar with Mahaley Lancaster and had used her a lot for her abilities. And he tried to use her to cover up his crime. Like he would go check with her to see what people knew to cover up his crime. And so she ended up being a witness, which she didn't take. She didn't, she was a very integral person. So basically what yeah. happened was John Wallace was this big, now all these counties, Coweta County, her County, Meriwether County. All these counties are all kind of there together. So they all know each other. They all work in and out of each other, right? Uh -huh. So John Wallace was this big land owner, this powerful man. He called the shots in Meriwether County, which is next to Coweta County. Now, John Wallace, as being a landowner, was also a sharecropper. He was also, my friends, we all got one of these in our family lines, a moonshiner. Moonshine. Moonshine. <laughs> Angie, you want to tell our friends what moonshining is if they're not they're not familiar with what this I mean, is? I don't really know how to make it or anything, but so I mean, most of us in the South, I mean, at least I always did, always had this when I was growing up, there was always like a, just a, a mason jar in the freezer, but it doesn't freeze. Um, and that was the shine. Shine. And it was always made be like sometimes they call it peach brandy, whatever it was, you know, some whatever the um, seasonal fruit was, they would use that. I, I think it tastes horrible. It's awful. <laughs> it is like the most potent alcohol. There is no drug out there there's that will ever compete no. to the intensity of moonshine. Now, mm -hmm. moonshine, I believe, is still illegal they, to, to moonshine. They do it outside. They do all sorts of stuff to make it. and They sell it. They're bootleggers. They sell it. So John Wallace was also moonshining. 
And there was a man named, uh, now John Wallace was not a very good guy. He controlled Meriwether County. He was that wealthy, that rich, that he kind of called the shots. He controlled the police force. There was a guy named Wilson Turner. Uh, Turner worked for John Wallace, um, and where, again, John Wallace had unlimited power. Uh, Turner was moonshining for Wallace. Some say that Turner started working for other people on the side and got fired as a result. Others say that he took money from Wallace's house. So this is like, I guess moonshine, it would be like the equivalent of, of almost a mafia-esque, like it's kind of mafia, but you know, I mean, this is highly illegal guys, but it still happens. Like it's still open. It's like an open secret that this happens in the South. Yeah. It's going on up in um, North Georgia for sure. Oh yeah. Um, there's, I, yeah. I've gone walking with my dog up there and I've come along, I've come across some place and I'm thinking, was it maybe meth going on or something? No, <laughs> but no I think it's moonshine Johnny, and yeah. my son has gone up there and fly fishing and just kind of, you know, just kind of following maps, not, you know, not just kind of going on the natural, the, uh, um, the, what do they call it? The, uh, like the government forest. I can't think of the yeah. word of it. Right National now. parks. Yeah. National parks. Can't think of the word. And, um, so, and he's come along, like he's come across. Right. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. They're like, they've got their whole, the, the that steel, up. the steel, yeah. the steel. They have to find a place. <laughs> moonshine steel. That's it where they make this shit. So everybody knew John Wallace was making this. I mean, it's, it's an open secret. It's illegal though, but it's an open secret. So there's many things They either say that, that Wilson Turner, who was sharecropping from Wallace and helping him with the moonshine business was either also working with other people on the side for more money or was anyway, something happened with money. John Wallace got mad and fired him. Wilson Turner decided to steal two of his cows. Wallace, he got arrested in Meriwether County, they released him. They took him up to Carrollton, Georgia, and there's all this lot. Anyway, they ended up accidentally killing him, and they they killed him in public. Like it was, you see, you saw it wasn't like they hot. They shot him. Yeah. They thought they were. They thought they had crossed the county line into Meriwether County, but they were still in Coweta County. If they had been in Meriwether County, John Wallace would have walked free, but they were in Coweta County. Now, after everybody saw him shoot the man. He went and buried his body in a ditch. And then because he's in Coweta County, now they got to find the body. So John Wallace was going to Mahaley to, so that she could tell him whether they could find the body. And she kept saying, yeah, they're going to find the body. So he ends up digging up the body, having his two employees who are black men dispose of the body. They ended up turning it into the cops. He was sent to the electric chair. It was a, it's the, a murder of Coweta County, guys. It's on YouTube. You can watch it. Johnny Cash plays the cop who gets him. Andy Griffith pay, plays John Wallace. And June Cotta Cash, she plays Mahaley Lancaster. And so Mahaley became very famous. This became a very famous case. And, and Mahaley kind of became the star of the case. Of course she did. It's like, this is... This is Mahaley is it this is how we are in the south is they had a centric like could you imagine the reporters from New York coming down and they've got this <laughs> woman with the glass eye and a military jacket who's an oracle but also a lawyer and also yeah, yeah testifying she so all of a sudden Mahaley becomes extremely famous all over the nation people were driving driving because it's this is that time um down dirt roads they said that at this time Mahaley, you would see call, like old the the you know the, the cars of that time like lined up down these dirt roads just waiting to get in to see Mahaley. Um, you know, one of the stories that was told over and over again is a group of of young women, 18, 19, 20 years old, went to go see Mahaley and and uh, to have her read for them. They were from Atlanta. And one of the girls, Mahaley said, "Oh, sorry, darling, I can't read for you." I can't read for you. And so the girl goes back out, her friends come in, come in and they get Mahaley to Mahaley reads for her friends. And her friends are like, Miss Mahaley, why wouldn't you read for our friend? And Miss Mahaley goes, cause, cause your friend doesn't have any future to read. That's what she said, your, your future, your, you, your future has no, your friend has no future. That night, the friend was in a car accident in Atlanta and died. She yeah. she'd help people find lost wallets, like people, men who work out in the fields would come in. Miss Mahaley, I've lost my wallet. I can't find it. She would read and tell them exactly where to find it. Um, she had this thing too, where she people would come when the lottery started happening, which has been a big struggle in Georgia because we're the Bible Belt. So, do we want to gamble? Well, yes, we do. You know, 
you know, you'll say you don't believe in gambling, but you see your grandma was sitting in the back of that gas station playing those right. I don't know if other parts scratching of the country off. have scratching off. scratching off, and but some gas stations at the ba at Hawk County <laughs> Roads have a back room. And you'll peep in through the curtain. You'll see these old ladies ding, 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 like playing like these. You know, it's illegal, but they do it. Um, and so Mahaley would would um, would tell people winning lottery numbers. And she said, if you win, you have to give me a portion of it. And so they would win, and they would come give her a portion of their winnings. You know. And so at one point, she got so famous, she had to hire a bodyguard. You know, so this woman lived, she lived in a shack her whole life. She never purchased with her sister. She never purchased any land. She always just lived in this little hut. And she had this bodyguard. And anyway, so her legend became so big that when she died, now her grave, and I am planning on going to her grave. It's only like 55 miles, 60 miles from Atlanta one day to see it. But they ended up had, having to restore her grave because, and this happens a lot to witch doctors too in the south a lot of these famous witch doctors um they have like fake graves and they're buried somewhere else because yeah. people will come to the grave and try to take a piece of the body <laughs> because they want the magic of the person mm -hmm. and this happened to Mahaley. when Mahaley's buried at the methodist church like the christian woman she's buried at the church um but they had to eventually now there is a rumor that they moved her body and that's her body's not there anymore it's somewhere else but there's also a, apparently a huge concrete slab now over where she's buried uh -huh. so that um, they can't get to the body. I am planning on going to visit her, though, her grave. That's Can I read real quick? I, I met yeah. somebody on Facebook, on Facebook, a um, new Facebook friend, and he wrote a poem about her. And you're talking about all this. Just I think it might be a good time to read it. His name is Joe Thrower. <clears throat> And I asked him if I could read it today on, on this. And he says, please do. Um, it says, a dollar for me and a dime for my dogs. She was born a bit different from what normal folks were with a call on her face and a gift that was hers. Have you seen this before? An oracle of the ages, self-proclaimed and could tell folks things that would happen they couldn't see. Mahaley lived with her sister Sally in a pack of dogs beneath the West Georgia pines midst an eerie thick fog. After reading people's fortune and before they left through the fog, she'd say a dollar for me and a dime for my dogs. You made, you made, she made you feel nervous to look in her face, afraid she'd cast a spell that would be forever in place. She had one good eye and the other was bare, just an empty socket and a marble that glared. She wore an old army hat, and stood tall as a man, then curse and scowl and curse again. Then after telling you of what's in store, she'd say a dollar for me and a dime for the dogs once more. Everyone heard about her famous reading of gloom that sent a Georgia farmer to meet his doom. Seems he killed his farm hand for stealing his cow, then went to Mahaley to see if the sheriff knew how. He buried his body to ashes and dumped them in a stream and hid his evil deed from the sheriff, it seemed. But justice in Mahaley finally prevailed and the evil Georgia farmer was locked in the Coweta jail. They say if you're ever walking by Caney Road Church at night... I think this is where she's buried yep. and down through the graves in the pale moonlight. If no one's around and the wind is just right, even though you want to scream, you stand and be quiet. You well in the South, we say quiet. quiet. <laughs> so that's, how, that's how it rhymes. You might hear a faint voice cursing as it pierces the wind. You know, it's Mahaley with these words again, stay as long as you like, but before you trip on a log, leave a dollar for me and a dime for my dog. Isn't that good? Thanks. Will you send that to me? And who was the guy who wrote this? His name is Joe Thrower. And I asked him, I said, did you write this poem? And he said, yes. And then he said, um, he said, uh, why, sure. I, I asked him, if we, could we read it? Could I read it on, on the YouTube with you? And I told him the channel and he says, why, sure. Maybe we could share royalties. <laughs> So anyway, I thought you'd enjoy that. I, I just yeah, remember, you saw me looking down at my phone a lot is because I just remembered that I had conversed with him and I had to look it up and I had to find it. I had to go through all these messages to find it <laughs> again. But anyway, I thought it was so I, good. Maybe, and that's, that's just, Mahaley is just, and maybe that's is Mahaley wanting us to tell her story again because uh -huh. as time passes on. Um, mm -hmm. But 
this is just what makes the South so fantastic. Mm-hmm. It's stories like Mahaley Lancaster. And I think all the women in the South, every woman I know who's from the South has a little bit of a Mahaley in her, you know, mm-hmm. and, and she, again, she reminds me of my grandmother. I, I, you know, my grandmother helped ha- hid books on reincarnation and she, you know, was really into the spirituality and she, you know, being from Quitman, Georgia, being, you know, I remember asked my grandmother once how she got into meditating because she found meditation before it was big in the United States when no one was meditating. It was just an Eastern practice. No one knew about it. My grandmother was like, well, you know, when you grow up in South Georgia on a dairy farm, it's too hot. There's nothing to do but just sit and stare, you know? And I think that's, yeah. it's the land that kind of, it's it's the, it's the personality of the environment that we're in that also lends to to the this eccentric um these eccentric people these characters you yeah. know it's, it's kind of like um howard fenster another one i covered him a long time ago when i first started in my channel up in north georgia the artist that um rem actually he has a, a his paradise gardens which i've been to a lot we had a lake house up there so you used to go to his you know these eccentric personalities howard fenster was this art great artist folklorist artist who created art out of junk you know, his Paradise Gardens was just trash, but it was incredible because it was all these sculptures and, yeah, you know, you have all these char- these just incredible characters that come from the South. And is it because there's like a corridor here? Is it because, I don't know. I don't know what creates, is it the fact that it's so damn hot that, you know, it pushes a certain personality out of people? And we always laugh in the South, we don't hide our crazy. We put, we put it on the front porch and give it sweet tea. You know, like that's, that's, that's how we, we all know, like, we all know, I mean, I'm sure everybody watching this right now is like, oh yeah, this is, this is a very typical Southern story and the moonshine and we all know what moonshine it is. We all know who moonshiners are. That's very yeah. normal. It's almost a respect to be a moonshiner. That's kind of a respectable job, even yeah. though it's illegal. You got to have respect for the moonshiners, you know? Yeah, I kind of want my son to take me back to wherever that was. And I would be like, I'm not here to harm you. I just want to tell you. I just want some of your moonshine. You want you, and she's like, you want some pickles? <laughs> yeah exactly we trade we barter um you know and we got we've got it's just it's just such an incredible i mean that's the folklore and the legendary of of the south and so um for the for you guys listening if you are from the south or have any experiences with mahaley let me know let us know in the comment section below because again i'm going to try to head down there and see her grave at some point and um you know, it's, it's, uh, so anyway, Angie, is there anything you want to close out with today about Mahaley, Miss Mahaley Lancaster? Well, I can't think of anything else. I was really excited about that poem. Um, I found that because I told you I didn't do enough research because I just had a crazy week, but, um, that was, that was just the thing that I thought was so good, but also in, in talking about witches, didn't you, you've said before that the, the, the word, witch means wise, wise woman. woman. So there's a song by Jason Mraz. If y'all want to hear me read it, <laughs> I can't sing it, but, um, I just, and I think about it sometimes and I'm like, oh my God, this is me. <laughs> like, she's a green garden goddess. Tender of the weed. She knows how to find it, grows everything she needs. She's a real wise woman with so much love to give. I'm so loving y'all. That's not what I'm trying to say. But there's so much here that's about kind of like Mahaley. She gives so much because she stays in touch with what her truest nature is. Because you know, Mahaley did that whole like, you know, political stuff and, you know, an attorney, all that, all those kind of things. So she kept it down to earth, but she was also kind of you know in both places at once she's a green garden goddess she hears the universe she's out there with the planet but she keeps it down to earth because she's the wise wise woman okay um she's uh, let's see if where's the line i thought it was and i got so wise wish i should see uh daughter of the sun sister of the moon mother to everyone she's a wise wise woman anyway it's a great song and i just Sometimes I listen to that whenever I'm told that I'm crazy or that I'm practicing witchcraft. I will play that song so dang loud and dance around in my kitchen and just say, hell yeah, I am. Yeah, that's all of the, we're, we're, you know, they say we're the granddaughters of the witches you didn't burn. I'm like, no, well, uh-huh. yeah, we are. But we're also, we, we're also Southern women. This, I, I can't tell you how many stories there are of how many Southern women learned tarot card from their grandmothers. Mm-hmm. who were like, 
head of the choir at the Baptist church. You know, this is just a part of who we are down here in the South yeah. is who we are. Well, like her being the way she was and being that Oracle and all, but still being going to church every Sunday and being buried in that, in the church. And they say she knew that Bible. Now, of course you guys know, I have a different, <laughs> right bible but the, given the time period that she lived in uh -huh. she knew that bible inside out she loved her some jesus and she was very respected you know uh -huh. that you respected her it was she, you didn't call her a witch you know you were i mean i'm sure she got called that occasionally but you you had yes miss mahaley yes ma'am like yes miss mahaley you know it's it's um it's that respect there for her and i'm about to have this herbalist her name is selena i just met her yesterday Tuesday, Tuesday, she came over and she brought me some tomatillo sauce that she'd made. I mean, that didn't have anything to do with the herbs, but, you know, but she is very, very um, educated and, and, and all. And when she was leaving, she said, by which I said, by which, like, <laughs> you know, but she's going to start coming on my channel and talking about what she does and, um, you know, how to heal yourself with just the with nature. nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, let us know. Like, I'm going to keep... I've actually gotten in contact with a folklorist who's from the area. Um, I can't wait for you to meet her, too. She might be coming on my channel next week, guys. Um, let us know, because this is such an important part of our history, not just for Southerners, but as humans. We're very complex, and we have to remember these stories of people like Mahaley, because that's the truth of who we are as people. I think we all have the touch of the of the witch in us, you know, and that's, and that's not a bad thing. That's us being in, in touch with, in tune with our nature and those around us. So anyway, you guys, all right. Yeah, and right now, like the Halloween, what old, um, like, uh, Solid. the day of the dead and all that, the veil is thin y'all. So. Yep. Yep. <laughs> all right, you guys, well, I'm going to have all of Angie's links down in the description box below. Again, let us know your thoughts and, um, enjoy researching Mahaley <laughs> and we will talk to you I want it to be a part two because I'm not done like I really wanted to look into it way yeah, more let's do a part let's movies. plan a part two let's I haven't seen two. the movies and I, I, the I, movie. I read that she was portrayed as being crazy in one of the movies and I'm like no no you know. and in in the murder of murder of Coweta County she was just eccentric okay I don't know any other movie that has her in it um but I'll have to look but um yeah just eccentric there's documentaries on her all sorts of stuff so she's quite let's keep her alive because she's mm -hmm. i think again i think we've all got a little bit of mahaley lancaster in us all of us yep. so anyway you guys let Bye. us know and we'll do this again bye everybody yep.